Good morning. Hello, everyone. And a very, very happy Wednesday. Is it a Wednesday? Is it a Thursday? I don't even know what day it is today. It's Thursday. Wednesday was yesterday. Um, happy, happy Thursday. And if you're here, do let me know where you're from, where you're tuning in from. And um, if you have any of these mica sprays, or if you're just curious about what we're doing with these mica sprays, I'd love to know. So let me know where you're from. Let me know if you have mica sprays in the comments. I should be able to see them. That also tells me that I'm able to see the comments and I'm able to respond to any questions that happen live. So I hope this will be fun. For those of you that are joining in, um, I am, if you're new here and if you happened to find out about this just by randomly scrolling through YouTube and made a suggestion, uh, welcome, welcome. If you are here from Mansi Makes With You, you already know me, so welcome. And if you came here from any kind of newsletter that you might have seen or any other Facebook or um, I, there, there are no Instagram shares. I don't think anybody uh, might have shared this on Instagram, but if you came here from a Facebook share, hi, uh, my name is Mansi. I'm a creativity coach and I love to play and I love to just experiment with different mediums and uh, work with the gel plate and just, you know, have fun and see what happens. So today I wasn't planning on doing the gel plate, but if there are people here um, that are tuning in that want me to demonstrate how these Distress Mica spray stains work on gel plate, I'm happy to experiment live um, with that. But I did want to make sure that this was broadcasting. My voice was actually audible because last time we had some issues with my sound oh hi leslie you bought this phrase of course you did <laughs> welcome welcome i am so glad that you did and i um think you might have also purchased the watercoloring portrait with acrylic inks course i don't know if i i think i remember seeing that email come through um, so if you're in that course, that's going to be a whole lot of fun. That's launching on Monday and uh, I just can't wait. It's been such a labor of love and I just can't wait for that course to launch. But uh, with these uh, mica spray stains, it's been quite fun because I've just been exploring getting out of my comfort zone and exploring um, sprays. I've never used sprays before. I, I like to use my hands quite a bit as I'm finger painting and just moving sponges and brushes around. So... Um, sprays are a new thing for me and I was very excited when Tim Holtz did his demo for the Halloween uh, collection of sprays which is what I ended up buying uh, despite saying I wouldn't buy anything new in, for, in the form of um, supplies I ended up buying those sprays because they just he, he makes everything go on my want list and I have to be very careful about wants versus needs because as you can see I have a ton of stuff that I don't regularly use and it's my vow to myself to use that, to empty those bottles of paint, to empty all of these. I mean, I have so many acrylics. I have alcohol inks. I have jacquard uh, fabric paints. I have a lot of stuff in my stash and we're not even going to get started on this side where I have all the stamps and dyes that I don't use. So I really have to stop myself from buying new stuff, but at the same time, if there's something that is a limited time only deal, which is what these Halloween uh, Distress Mica spray stains were, the temptation was so strong, I couldn't resist. And they just, the, the yellow especially is magical. It's just magical. So I had to get that. So I figured, you know, I'll, I'll make an exception for this. Hi, Randy. Hi, Marissa. What time zone is Portugal in right now? Where, what, what's the time in Lisbon? I probably should check on the world clock, but it's easier to ask you, Marissa, what time it is, where you are. It's 11.04 for me here in the morning, and I'm in the Bay Area, and it's really nice and sunny here. The sky is blue, um, pleasant weather. It's been uh, kind of chilly in the evenings, so we do have a bit of fall creeping in. Hi, Lisa from Calgary. Um, welcome. It's I love Calgary. The weather there is just beautiful. And you probably are seeing a lot more fall colors than we are here in the Bay Area in California. We have so many evergreens and beautiful redwoods. But I miss, um, I used to be in Iowa. I, I did my master's in journalism from Iowa. And I miss the seasons. You could see the seasons as you're walking down the streets. I miss seeing that over here. So as people are tuning in, I'm going to start um, sharing the other camera. 
Let's see if I can make that one bigger and make myself smaller. There we go. So this is my collection, my entire collection of sprays. Oh, it's seven o'clock in the evening in Lisbon, same as London. Oh, good, then um, you're gonna go to bed happy. <laughs> I hope you have sweet dreams about uh, Distress Mica stains and it gives you some ideas and the possibilities of what you can do with sprays and with stencils. And if nothing else, my hope is that even if you don't have, I'm not asking you to invest in these spray stains if you don't want to, but if um, you don't have spray stains, it's fine. You might still pick up ideas from this play. You, I'm just playing today from this playtime today that might you know, work for your other projects, mixed media projects or journals or tags or what have you. So don't think of it as, you know, just because you don't have some spray stains, this doesn't apply to other things. So let me walk you through what I have. So this is from the collection, the Halloween collection of sprays. I'm trying to look for the orange. Is it this one? It's this one. So it's the bubbling cauldron, the flickering candle, the distressed spica stain jack-o'-lantern. So these three colors are just absolutely remarkable. And they're, they're fall colors. They really are fall colors. These speak to me a lot. I wish that flickering candle came in a bigger size and was a standalone item because that's the one, as you can see, I don't know if you can tell, but that's the one I've used up most. It's, um, that's the one I'm using the most. And that's what I use the most in this book that I started, I created because, you know, I was creating these backgrounds and I'm like, I could turn this into a book. So that's what happened here. And then the other set for the Halloween that he showed us in a demo two weeks ago was this one. So this is Empty Tomb, Hocus Pocus, and Crooked Broomstick. So the Crooked Broomstick is more of a brown. Uh, Hocus Pocus is a uh, purple, and then Empty Tomb is a black, but it's a black with a sheen. All of these have a sheen. Hi, Jane from Ithaca. And... Um, all of these have a sheen, so you won't see that's And that, I find, is the most intriguing, the most beautiful thing about these, is that you don't see the, the sheen in the first instance, but you see it when you tilt, when it catches the light. What other stains do I have? I don't have any other... Um, so these are from the Halloween collection. These, the Distress Mica Spray, the Brushed Pewter, the Tarnished Brass, and the antiqued bronze. So the, the tarnished brass is more like a gold. These are, you can find these at any time of the year. Um, I like these for um, kind of like embellishing my gel plate prints. Like if you get even a brayer sheet and you add any one of these sprays, it elevates even the brayer sheet. So, and I'll show you, maybe I can do some, a bit of brayering too and show you what I mean, but it just adds this pop, this sparkle and just elevates the colors in anything. So which is why I have these three. Now I have been teaching at Creative Escape in Los Gatos, which is an amazing mom and pop uh, local business. And um, it's, it's risky to go there every week because every time I go, I end up buying something. Just for this demo, for the purpose of this demo, because I got so curious, people were asking me, what is the difference between Distress Oxide sprays and Distress Mica spray stains? Now, I hadn't ever used these, so I couldn't speak to that. I don't know what the difference is. I mean, I could speak to that from watching Tim's videos, but I haven't in my experience used it, so I don't know to speak for me, which is why I bought these. And I experimented with them just 20 minutes before this live so I could get a sense for how these work. These are completely opaque. They have no sheen. They basically will give you absolute opaque coverage over something either if you're wanting to create a background or if you've messed up and you want to cover it up. That's what I experienced. So this is the book, if you haven't already seen it, this is what I made the other day when I was playing with my Distress Mica stains, the sprays, and the sheen is unbelievable. And I'm hoping that the camera is picking it up because when you open it, it just looks flat. It looks like a regular sprayed over page, but then you start tilting it and you start discovering these these things, these hidden elements almost. It's like things that you wouldn't wouldn't even see when the page was flat, which is what I love about this. And it especially shows in these rainbows over here. So this page, flat, 
Yes, it's, it's fine. But then the magic happens when I tilt. You see how beautiful that is? I am a big fan of the hide and find, the hide and seek technique. I've always encouraged that in any mixed media projects that I have ever taught. That is my style. I love that. I live for that. So for me, this these sprays do that. They provide that hide and seek effect. So what I did this morning was I played with the Distress Oxide sprays. And when I tilt this, you'll see that the Distress Micas are in there too. But I did the background with the Distress Oxide and... It just was flat. It was it was completely opaque. And yes, it has that nice, beautiful mottled effect with water and all that stuff. But then look at the sheen that the Distress Mica sprays added to that. That's just, to me, that grunge that you get. It's amazing. It's just absolutely amazing how they settle. And then I did some Distress Crayons on top of that, the mark making that I normally do. And I, this may or may not... Like when I was looking at this, this could actually potentially be a journal cover, you know, it could, or a folio, something. But I just love that you can create something like this in a matter of minutes with just sprays. So I'm going to take out my splat box and do the whole setup and um, we'll see how this goes. And if you have any questions, if you have any ideas, if you have something you want me to try, do write that down in the comments because I am able to see the comments. This flat box is the most wonderful thing ever. It has protected from my iPad and every every single thing on my table. The glass mat still gets some stray sprays because I'm just not very good about seeing where I'm spraying. Sometimes I've sprayed it myself. So I have spray stains on my clothes as well, but that's user error, nothing to do with the, with the spray bottles. I also save these. So I save all of my paper towels. I have been saying that in chat to Tim as well. Save your paper towels, don't throw them away because these are amazing mixed media pieces when you start doing your art journaling and collaging in your art journals. Oh, they are so good. So don't throw these away. I like to have these, they not only just protect the splat box, they also give me fodder, some material for future play in a mixed media journal. Okay, so here's, oh, one more thing I wanted to show you. So another thing that I did today, so I make two backgrounds from one spray session. That's what I've been doing. So basically I'm lying down, I'm, and I'm gonna show this too, but I just want to explain what I did. So basically putting two sheets of paper, spraying differently, using different stencils. And then for this one, I wasn't particularly happy with any of the marks or, you know, I used a, a poppy stamp on this, poppy stencil on this. It looked... It looked like it would yield a different result in my head, but turned out different on paper. I like this. I might use this as a mixed media element in my journal at some point. I might outline the flowers as well using the stencil again on top. There are possibilities with this, but I also wanted to see how it cuts out. So I used this die cut and I was just putting this against black paper. Here, I'll show you. So this is just amazing. It's kind of like doing gel plate printing and getting fast results and unexpected results. And I just love that. And then it has this bonus sheen to it, which I usually always get with color shift acrylics. If you've taken any of my gel plate printing courses, you know how much I love color shift acrylics. So let's get started. I have cut out some sheets of paper. So this is eight and a half by 11 cardstock. And I've just cut these in half. And two of them fit perfectly in this box here. Well, kind of perfectly. <laughs> they will overlap a bit. Okay, and I'm fine with that because I'm gonna turn it, I'm doing abstracts, I'm not doing any particular style. But I like to spray to begin with the same way for both. And I have been doing, again, color choices, any, any shout outs you wanna have, comment, you know, tell me which colors after which colors or things like that, it's totally fine. Hello from Munich. Hi, Yen. Is it Yen or Jen? I have a friend whose name is G-E-N-S, but he says Yen's. So I want to make sure I'm pronouncing your name properly. For the mica uh, spray stains and for any of these sprays, actually, always do the ringing the bell, not the up and down like I've been doing, and that 
causes for leakage. So learned that during one of Tim's lives. His lives go on for three hours sometimes, so it's a time investment for sure, but the amount of information he shares is amazing. So if you can make time for any of his lives, do, because you get a ton of information. So just lightly spraying with my flickering candle. See, it's leaking. And that's because initially I was shaking it up and down and up and down, and all that air just kind of travels up and stays there. So after the yellow, let me do a green, since we're doing fall colors, talking about fall colors. Jenny. Oh, that's sweet, Jenny. Hi, Jenny. So just shake it enough. I usually, I don't know, there's no like pound. I'm very impatient with these. I'm really, really impatient with these. The shaking business is what drives me nuts. Why can't this just work without shaking? But oh well, that's how it is. Taking that off, making sure I get some green here and not a stark line. And then I'm gonna take my orange, which is the jack-o'-lantern, and we just use the bubbling cauldron. And shake that. So you basically want the ball rolling in it and you want all that um, beautiful glistening mica to disperse in with the solution so that it's all uniformly dispersed and you're not getting blotches. And it dries up right away. Ooh, I love that. That's fall right there. And then I'm gonna do some more over here. In parts, I'm kind of making a vignette in this one. See, the closer you do it, if you don't do it from a distance, it's going to be blotchy and circles. If you do it from a distance, the spraying, it's going to be more even and more dispersed and more um, organic and less controlled. So just doing that, lifting it up and spraying it makes a difference in how it appears, right? And you can already see the shine. You can already see how beautiful this is. And now the magic happens when we bring in our stencils. So I'm gonna leave this here. I'm gonna bring in a stencil. This is a jelly art stencil that I absolutely love. It's one of my favorite stencils. And I'm just gonna place this stencil on top. It fits this sheet of paper almost perfectly, right? Now it's not gonna lie down flat because of how not careful I am or how careless I am with storing my stencils properly, but I'm okay with that. You probably have flatter stencils than mine. And I'm gonna take some purple and I'm also gonna take some, well, maybe I should stick with the warm colors. So maybe I'll do some tarnished brass and maybe I'll do some bronze with this and then I'll go back with some yellow. But essentially gonna mix my colors up a bit. And what happens is when you're Adding your sprays on to the stencils, a lot, you'll notice that a lot of your spray is gonna stay on the stencil. Which is what was driving me nuts, that it stays on the stencil. And then it feels like you're wasting it. And I'm not gonna put my stencil in a, in a water tank to wash it off because I don't clean anything. And again, if you followed me for any length of time, you know that I don't clean anything at all, except my fingers from time to time. Okay, so I have these two, and then I wanna just do a little bit more of the green. And I don't know what I'm doing here. There's no method to my madness. I'm just kind of guessing what's gonna appear under. I'm not entirely sure, but therein lies the beauty of play, right? Just here and there, little spritzes. Now I'm gonna not lift my stencil up quite yet. I'm gonna take this other sheet that I made, I'm gonna stick it on top and I'm gonna to press it down just like I would on a gel plate, but firmer. I'm just picking up all the spray that was on that stencil. And the effect on both of these papers from laying down that one stencil and spraying that one time is going to be completely different. Here's this one. So you see how it lifted the inks, the sprays, the mica off of that 
and it just has this beautiful texture because it's not a continuous stream of anything. It's just picking it up. So it already looks like it's textured without using any texture paste. And I just absolutely adore that effect. And then we take this one off and we've got kind of a mottled effect. It's a very soft, ethereal look. And what did that take? All of three minutes for two backgrounds? Now you can keep building on this, obviously, or you can leave it be. I love to build on things. So you can see these side by side, how different they look. It's just amazing to me. This is almost like gel plate printing and lifting a ghost print. That's how I relate to this. And it's just amazing that it does that. So now if you wanted to add some more color to this and you wanted to go the oxide route, if you have the oxides, you could use another stencil and you could place it in parts and just play with that. Now, if I were to use the wild honey over here, And I'm gonna do some mark making. I'm gonna do some mixed media here too because that is what I do. I don't just do sprays. Sprays are um, a starting point for me. They are not the end point. So I am gonna build on this and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do after I've done the sprays. Now again, there's a lot of spray on there which I can quickly get off over here. Again, my motto of not wasting anything and saving everything. So you see you get that beautiful layer of the excess over there. The background shows through. In this one, it's the opposite. And so on and so forth. You can keep continuing to do that, keep continuing to build on it. Now we have some crackling campfire, which will also look really pretty with these colors. Again, these need a really, really good shake. So take about 20 seconds. 20 to 25 seconds to keep doing this. And if you're playing along with me and you want to share what you made today after this live, definitely go to the Facebook group Mansi Makes with you and share your makes. I would love to see what you produced because I'm sure what you make is going to be very different as it always is, even when we play with the same supplies because you are doing you and you have different stencils than I have. The order of colors you chose is going to be different. So I absolutely love the diversity that our playtime brings to the table. So here we have this one getting built a different way than this one while using the same stencils and the same colors. I just think that's just amazing. It just blows my mind that you can do this stuff with sprays. I mean, I'm just spraying. It's, it's insane. I'm gonna use some purple because I feel like it needs some darkness around the edges maybe. And for this, I'm gonna use another stencil I love, which is this one. Let me just bring it over. I just love this stencil. I think this is Woven Loom by Catherine Cooler. And the first two that I used were both from Jelly Arts. Just gonna give it a very light spray over here because that purple is intense. Just for some drama. I'm gonna pick up that purple over here on this edge right here. Just to get that pattern over there. So you see how it's becoming something, something really cool. And if I tilt it, you can see that the, ox the, the stains under shine through. So you see the circle under the cross hatch shines through. It's brilliant. It's just absolutely brilliant how it does that. And therein lies my fascination with these sprays, you can tell. It's just, it's nothing that I have seen before. I just haven't. And that's just, it's mind blowing to me that you can do this in a matter of minutes. So I like this one. I'm going to let this one be. I, I like it the way it is. And I'm going to do some mark making on this in a minute. But for this one, I just want to build it a little bit more. We haven't applied any direct stencils on this. So you know what I can do is for this last bit, I can apply a stencil on this and then lift it off on this so that this gets some variation because this is pretty much same old, same old. I love the variations this one has. So we could try that. And Try and limit yourself to two to three stencils at a time 
because you know what happens if you try to do too much you end up with what I ended up with here which is me trying to do too much me kind of throwing everything in the kitchen sink right this was like five different stencils and oxide sprays and the mica sprays and it just ended up being nothing so it's still pretty when you tilt it in the light but it's it's not something that I would look at and go, yeah, that's a, that's a usable thing right away. I'll have to modify this quite a bit. This one, on the other hand, because I used only two stencils in this and then did some mark making, it feels more, um, what's the word for it? Stable? Not stable, but it just, it, it just feels like it's all together. It's pulled together. It's not a hot mess. So you don't want a hot mess because then it starts throwing your game off. And then you're just trying to recover from it, which is never a good feeling to have. I'm going to use some brass. I like this brass. This brass is really, really nice. Whoa, and the lid just flew away. Okay, I'm going to use this brass with, I want to stick with the same stencils. And I like the circular one. So I'm going to stick with that. Or maybe the circular one won't lift off really pretty on this. So here's when you just give it some a minute of thought. But also feel free to dismiss that thought because I get too caught up then if I start thinking and I don't want to get too caught up. I want to be in the moment and just play. Maybe this is a bad idea because I'm not entirely convinced this is going to play out. Nice. So I'm just going to go with my last one, the loom. And I'm just trying to see where I want to spray it directly onto this. I think I want to spray it in this corner here. Spray it over there. See if I can lift off some of this in the corresponding corner here. Ah! It just added some texture right there. So cool. And then what did it do for this? It didn't do much at first glance, but then when you tilt it, you see a little bit of it. So you see at the edge, there's just a little bit, teeny tiny bit. I kind of like that effect. So I'm going to do a little bit more over here without being afraid. I'll do it here, here, and here, just to break up the monotony of the colors. And of course, because this is spray, it'll go everywhere. I think that's enough, yeah? So you have some nice texture building happening with three stencils. And then we can put this aside and do some mark making which is what I did before I built this book. So each of these pages is basically spraying and then mark making, right? So you can do that. And I used my Distress Crayons and I'll, I'll show you, I'll talk you through how I am doing this. I'm leaning towards the teals and the blues for this because it really is such a pretty color combination. Um, I have a pastel here, but let's see if I use it or not. And then something to do a contrast. So maybe like a bright orange or a bright red might be too much. So let's do an orange here. Just kind of sticking with the color scheme. And for mark making, my marks are usually very, very simple. So I'll just go in and start doing mark making. And my principle there is pick a color, pick a shape. Use that color to make that shape. Really, that's all there is. Pick a color, pick a shape. Use that one color and that one shape, always together. Right, so now we've established we're doing rectangles with the teal. So with the Distress Crayon, you can go in and you can decide you wanna do something else. So maybe you make some X's, or maybe not. Maybe you just smudge it and you just introduce some color in some parts. And again, don't overthink any of this. Don't think about any of this. Just kind of be in the moment and see what happens. If it becomes too symmetrical, break it up. If you like symmetry, don't break it up. You know, do what brings you joy. Don't go by what I'm doing because I honestly don't know what I'm doing. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing and seeing what happens. So I see some areas where I feel like I could introduce a color. I just go in and put that in and just smudge it around. And yes, it covers up some of my beautiful background, but hey, that's the point of it. 
hide and seek. Because otherwise it's all just mundane, you know, it's just all repetitive and it becomes, okay, you've seen it, you've seen it once, what, what else? What else is there? What else do you bring to the table? I'm trying to find my coral. I have an abandoned coral, which I think will look really pretty. And I think I'm going to do a circle here. Ooh, that looks really pretty. Do some circles, you know, again, just any shape, simple shapes. It doesn't, mixed media is not complicated. Mark making is not complicated. So don't let people make you feel like it is. Everybody can do this. Every single person can do this. It's just play, childlike play. And just have fun while doing it too. Don't worry about getting messy fingers. You can always wash it off. Okay, and then I want to do a white in some areas. Maybe I can make some of these X's. So this is a Stabilo Woody pencil. So far I've just used, um, this was also a Stabilo Woody pencil. These are water soluble pencils. So you essentially could, if you wanted, take, I don't have any water handy, so I'm just gonna take my spray bottle and just put water on my brush. You could essentially just do that. So instead of having some really bold marks, you could diffuse those marks out with water if you're using water soluble pencils and that just changes the character of this background because now there's no strong teal marks in this one they're diffused you could do the same thing with your distressed crayons because they're water reactive too so again simple things like this so this one will have more distinct marks with the teal this one we use the same teal but the marks are more diffused. They're more kind of disappearing into the background, right? So you can just play with the same supplies and they will give you different results based on what you choose to do with them. I'm just randomly choosing some of these X's and filling in white with my water soluble pencil again. There's no X over here, but I wanna make a white mark here. So I'm just going to make an X because X's are simple to make. And I want to do an X maybe over here. And maybe over here. Okay, so we have some X's going here. Let's see if we can introduce some of that white in here too. And because we're choosing the same color, same shape. You can also do this with pastels if you have any pastels lying around. Pastels will keep rubbing off though, so just remember to do some kind of a top layer on this after otherwise they'll just keep rubbing off on your hands i actually recently discovered let me just try that out i recently discovered this is what happens when i clean that for christmas one of my uh, secret santa people had sent me these this was on my wish list this is an um r f oil paint in stick form i have tried using it a couple of times i actually don't know how to use these but I was talking to a lady yesterday and she told me that these actually are basically oil paint and in a stick form and then you just peel the top layer off and you use it like you would use oil paint. It also, it cures like oil paint. It dries up in like three days or something. So let's see how this, ooh, that is intense. Oh, and it can be smudged. Look at that. That is very cool. Okay, discovered something new today. Oh, and I, the smudging can actually go on to the other one. <laughs> Love it. It has a strong smell. Okay, so I'm not a big fan of smells. So it definitely has a strong oil paint smell to it. I'm trying to do a very, very thin layer because I don't want this to take three days to dry up. Because that was not, this was just a spur of the moment thing. I just remembered I had that and I could try it on here. Okay, so you can already see the character of these two is very, very different. I'm gonna put this back. I'm gonna read up more about, this is not the lid for this, is it? This is the lid for the spray stains. Well, I'm gonna to have to find the lid. Oh, there it is. Um, yeah, but you can play, you can have, if you have Posca markers, you can add marks with Posca markers on this, like any kind of mark making that you wanna do really is totally up to you. 
And if you want to turn these into a book, all you would do then is fold these. They just are so pretty. Or you could make tags out of them too. You could make gratitude tags out of them. You could make bookmarks out of them. The smaller you cut this, you could die cut it. The smaller you cut these pieces, these are again just starter pieces. You could stick them in your journal and do something with them. I always like to have some black. So you can have some black over here. Come up with a design and just stick with that design throughout. Maybe it'd look better as threes. I'm just using a Sharpie, good old Sharpie. So what happens is when you cut this up into smaller bits, it takes on a whole new life. It doesn't look like it does right now. It becomes something different. And I, in, I would encourage you to try that. Cut it up. Don't feel like this is something so precious that you've made because really it only took you three minutes to make one. So And you actually made two backgrounds in a very, very short amount of time. So don't hold on to it as being too precious. Cut it up because then you see new things emerge and then you keep building on those new things that emerge. So here, let me show you an example of what I mean. So last week when I was making these backgrounds, I started cutting them up. So these are gonna be dresses for my, my paper dolls. But you see, when you cut it up, all you're seeing is just this. And now you can build on that. All you're seeing is just this. So it changes your perspective. And then you can start adding elements to it, different elements to it. It just changes your entire perspective instead of looking, staring at one sheet. So I think it might be dry enough for us to try out some cutting and seeing what happens. Let me see if I have my punchers around. Okay, so this is gonna be a bit tricky because this is not entirely dry. I'm hoping it won't get stuck. I'm just gonna cut out a shape with my scissors and show you what I mean. I'm gonna trim this first, so I'm gonna get my trimmer. Do not be afraid to cut up your backgrounds. And let's see, if I wanted to make this a bookmark and I wanted my bookmark to be two by, how much is this, 4.25 by 5.5, so, okay. So I wanted my bookmark to be this size. Maybe some of you are gonna be getting bookmarks from me in the mail. <laughs> so see, just doing that, it's taken a life of its own, just doing that. And then you make the corners rounded and you add a tassel, you add some more mixed media bits to it. Let's make bookmarks. I'll at least show you a couple and then we can see if there's something else we want to try with these sprays. So we've got three bookmarks and then this one, let's see which side I want to trim up because I'm gonna have a little strip left, which I can use in my journaling or in my paper doll bodies. So I want this strip. Okay, so I have four bookmarks from that one sheet. So put this back in. Oh, you know, another thing that you could do is you could spray directly on envelopes and you could have decorative envelopes in a jiffy. And that is another thing that you could totally do is bring directly on envelopes. So let's see if I can round off these corners. This is my envelope maker, which is what made me think of envelopes. Just rounding these off because it already has that inbuilt. So I don't have to, I was so tempted to buy one of those little corner rounder punches. And then I remembered I already have this. There's so many things, you know, out there that one could purchase. It's just, you just have to think about what you have at home that you could also use, or you always have scissors. So you can resist the temptation to buy more and more and more. <laughs> so here's what I'm gonna do. 
four people from the United States who comment on this video, live video, not the replay, the live video, will be put in a drawing to get a bookmark that I'm making right now. And I'm sorry for those of you who are attending from other countries, but the way the post office works during COVID, none of my mail has been reaching any of the recipients. There's handmade stuff that I've shipped out with tracking numbers and everything, and it just is not making it across the pond. So, and even to Canada, it's been hard. There's just, you know, no knowing whether or not it will reach you. So if you are in the United States and you leave a comment saying that you would love to receive one of these bookmarks, I'm happy to send it to you. After, of course, I do a lucky draw. <laughs> I don't want to come across as being partial. I'm getting up because I want to do some mixed media stuff on this. So I'm getting my Distress Grit Paste and Texture Paste. So I've got my Distress Grit Paste and Texture Paste. I'll get some embellishment mousses. So you get to see this in action. Oh, look at all these people. You're all here. I love your bookmarks, but not as much as your portraits. Oh, thank you. Yes, the portraits are fun. I could actually make portraits. Hey, you know what? <laughs> okay, Jane, you got your wish. Let me make a portrait on this. Why not? So I'm going to take my Derwent Ink Tense pencils and I'll still use my grit paste and all of that stuff. That was a fantastic idea. Let's do it. Let's make portraits. Let's make powerful women on here that will remind us of certain things. And then I can just stick on some words. So if we're making a face, let's see. Okay, so I'm just going to make a face over here. This is going to be my face right there. So my eyes are going to go here. Oh, this is so spur of the moment. I just love that this just is something that's just happening. I love that in the moment. do my face. I am not going to say that I'm not good at making faces. I'm okay at making faces. At least I'm not scared of making faces anymore. The fear is still there, but not to the degree it used to be. Practice does that. So much practice and so much doing it, afraid. So much of that. I can't even tell you how much of that I have had to overcome in these last couple of months. So here's my first face, and here is my second face, which is going to be different from my first face because that's how each one of these is. They just end up turning out to be different. For those of you joining in late, I'm seeing all the comments popping up about wanting a bookmark. If you are in the United States, I am going to put your name in a drawing if you leave me a comment saying that you would like a bookmark and four people will be shipped a bookmark after this live ends and when this texture paste and all of the stuff that I'm going to add to it <laughs> dries up. Hopefully by tomorrow they should be in the mail. Okay and then maybe give her different kind of hair. Ooh, this one is turning out to be interesting. So you see, I'm not worried about covering up. That's the one thing that you have to always, always, always keep in mind. Don't start holding things as being too precious because the moment you do that, you are in trouble because you will never, ever get out of your comfort zone then. You will just always think, oh, but, but I made that and that looked so pretty. And, you know, take a photo. That's what I always say. Take a photo. What sharpener do I use? I use this sharpener here. Thanks for reminding me because this, this is pretty stubby. This is the sharpener I use. It's an AFMAT sharpener and I can give you a link to it so you can find it easily. And it's really, I've had it for over a year now and I've had no complaints. And I'm using my Derwent Intense pencils because I just like the 
that they're water soluble. So I use the sepia ink on these two. And now I'm going to use the bark, which is more of a brown. And this is going to be a face in the middle. So just gonna make her right here. And again, this is all just me kind of doing it in the moment. None of this was planned, as you can tell. It's been very organic, which I thank you all for keeping that space for me and letting me experiment with you because I know you're investing your time in this as well. But I am actually hopeful that many of you attending this will pick up some skills as well, you know, pick up some ideas and will implement those ideas. It might not have anything to do with technique. It might not have anything to do with the spray stains either. It might just have to do with how you approach your art, how you make your art, what you want it to be, not what you know somebody else did or what somebody else created, but what you want your art to be. I'm hoping that that is what this will give you. Um, last one for a face. I only know how to make faces a certain way. I haven't quite spent any time trying to even figure out honestly how to make side faces and faces that look one side and all that stuff um it's been hard enough to get over the fear and come um, this far i'm sure that it's there in the future for me if i so um direct my energies to learn how to make faces that are looking sideways and are happy or smiling or laughing or you know all of those expressions I'm not there yet I don't feel confident enough to try that yet I feel like it was it took me a while to get over my fear of making any kind of face so just this I'm grateful for that I was able to put my fear to rest and do this at least Okay, and again, don't have water since I wasn't planning to do any of this. So I'm just going to use my sprayer <laughs> and I have my thickest brush. Maybe I can actually grab a thinner brush. At least let me do that because my brushes are right here. So I also have another rule when I'm doing any kind of art. When I sit at my workstation, I try to use the supplies within my arm's reach I try not to make it too complicated because as you can tell from looking at my space, I do have a lot of stuff. So if I start looking at everything around my space and try using it or trying to make, you know, judgment calls on what I should use and what I should pair with what and getting those ideas in the middle of doing something, it makes it overwhelming for me. It might not for you, but for me, that's what it does. I get overwhelmed very very easily um, with the sheer amount of options I have which is why when I sit down if there's one thing that I am doing I'm just gonna like keep doing that with whatever supplies are at hand I'm not gonna get up and get new supplies at least I try to live by that but then again you know when you're doing textures and stuff like that my texture pastes are always way behind me so I do get up to get those I'm just using my uh, wet brush. Let me just move all of this to the side. Using my wet brush and just spreading this Derwent ink tents, the pigments in that, around to give these faces a bit of a softer look so that they're not as harsh, which I will go back in with a black Sharpie or a black marker and intensify some features after. But for now, where did I put my water? There it is. Uh, for now, I'm just kind of loosening the pigment up a bit. So, you know, it suddenly starts becoming something. This, this random sheet of paper started out, blank sheet of paper started out as a background which we're just basically playing with and experimenting with and seeing, you know, how these distress mica stains work and all that. And suddenly, because, you know, we were open to the idea of doing anything with them, and as I was talking and as you all were typing, this is where the course, you know, the journey took today. This is the path we're on. 
And I love that. I love that there's that, that willingness to experiment in all of you that are attending as well. That idea of, you know, you don't have to go in with a preconceived notion. A lot of people that are card makers go in with that idea. And I understand why, because you have to make a card for a specific occasion and you want to use specific stamps and you want to have a specific sentiment come across. But I'm not taking away from that. I'm not saying don't do that. Do that. But also explore doing this because when you allow yourself to be free and not have any of those agendas, not be making anything for anyone, but doing it for you, the energy is different. The vibe is different. What you will create will be very different. So just keep that in mind, you know, anytime you're creating something. Now, this, of course, is my aquarelle white. I'm just adding that in because I want the face to feel a bit separated out from the background. Otherwise, everything looks the same, the same, the same. And it's a very, very simple technique of just using white and then of course I'll go in and darken the features in a minute but it just separates out your face and I could use my pastels I could you know bring out my Jane Davenport birthday suit pastels and uh, use those the powders the actually I can take them out without getting up from here so let me show you what those do I mean, why not? So here these are. So I'll have you compare this face to another face that I do with the pastels. So for the pastels, you're basically just taking one of these dual ended brushes and you're just kind of going to go in and start smearing that around like you would be applying color to the face or makeup. You know, just kind of... Um, making that background not completely disappear but become really really light so your face looks really different and if your face becomes too dark and you're like wait it just is becoming this brown mess just go in with some white it always becomes a mess when i start using these because again you know it's a different medium altogether and now you're really truly mixing all your mediums up because <laughs> you have your spray your mica under this and you have a water-soluble pencil. I used a bit of oxide spray, I remember using that. So you see the difference? It's pretty apparent, right? So if you want that very subtle look, then use your soluble pencils. If you want something more pronounced and more like a real face, then use your pastels. Now, what if you've used your pastels and you really don't like the look? happens all the time don't trash stuff if that happens see how the face changes when you add your distinct lines with your marker and then make any more decisions don't immediately start thinking oh this is rubbish oh what did I do I ruined it this is going straight to the trash can that kind of talk does you no good because that kind of talk is not helping you build confidence. It's not, it's, it's shutting things out. It does you absolutely no good. So try to stay away from that kind of talk. Think more like, okay, I don't like that. What else could I do to change it up? And you know, as soon as you start being open to that, ideas come to you. Inspiration comes knocking when she knows that you're ready for her. If she knows you're going to be dismissive, she's not going to come. She's going to go to someone else. I read that in a book. That's not something I made up. But it stayed with me. And I think it's true. I think it's a lot of uh, voo-voo. But I mean, look at that. It just completely transforms, right? You just use a black Sharpie and things start changing. I love that. Don't give up. Don't... Don't decide. Just like that, don't decide that what you did is not good enough or what you did sucks or, you know, we are so good at being our own worst critics and we're so good at just dismissing our own efforts and our own, I'll say talent, 
lot of people hesitate saying the word talent. All of us are talented. We are all born talented. We are all born artists, you know. Every single kid knows how to play, knows how to make art, knows how to create. As we grow older, we lose it because we get all so hung up on, oh, this is the way it should be. This is the way how I'm supposed to do it. This is the way I should do it because this is the way everybody else is doing it or whatever the reasons are, you know. We get hung up on that. And then we start judging ourselves through a lens that is not of our own making. I want you to break that, break that cycle, you know. I drew her face, then softened the lines with water, then sharpened the lines again. What was the reason? The reason was to get to know her. The reason was to understand if that face was speaking to me. I, there's no technique reason for it. There is no, um, you'll still see that there is a softness to her face because of that dilution of the Derwent Inktense pencil. There is a softness, but there's also a definite expression there. There's a definite face there. There's purpose there, which is why I like to use my Sharpie, is to define that so that she's not getting lost. But I don't want her features to be extremely harsh either. Also, you know, it's, it's just my process. It's my way of, as I said, getting to know her. I am getting to know who she is. I'm, I'm figuring it out as I'm doing every single stroke here, who she is. And that is what determines what, you know, words I put later on, what textures I add. It's, and I, it may, I don't know how else to explain it. I really don't know how else to explain it. It may sound weird. Um, but if you immerse yourself in the process and you feel like, you know, something is coming out of this and you honor that, then it changes the way you draw. It changes the way you make things. And I'm getting a bit emotional saying that, and I don't know why. But it's hard to explain. It's hard to explain why I do what I do in the moment. <laughs> it's, uh, that's what I felt like doing, honestly. That really is what I felt like doing. And I honored that feeling. So it's hard to explain sometimes why I felt like, to, I don't know why I felt like doing that. I just did and I just went for it. Now I feel like doing this. I didn't feel like coloring in these two women's hair. I felt like doing it when I was doing these two. I don't know why. <laughs> it's, I'm just doing it. So, in, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, I know it's hard to grasp some of this, but when you start doing it yourself, I think it starts making sense. With my gel pens, I always have to roll them a bit on my hand because it just gets the ink flowing. Of course, if there's no ink, no amount of rubbing on your hand is going to do you any good. So always check if your pen actually has any ink in it first. So this is the jelly. So I, I like both the the Signo. So this is the Uniball Signo. I like this. And I also like the Jelly Roll. This is from Sakura. I like both of them. They're all, they're both really nice. I'm just adding some white for highlight areas and for the eyes. You don't necessarily have to go into details, but that is what I am doing. You don't have to do any of this, actually. You don't even have to make bookmarks. You can do whatever you know you want to do. But this is what I'm doing today. So I I have to say this even in my watercoloring classes that you know just do what speaks to you. And they get very confused because watercoloring is such a precise thing that aren't you supposed to do what you're supposed to do? Yes, to a certain extent. But if I had said that yesterday in my class, if you're in my Facebook group, Mansi Makes With You, you'll see all the photos I posted. Each one of those pairs that we painted yesterday in that watercolor class started off with a stamp, the same stamp. Each person used the same exact colors, but I didn't tell them to use the same exact colors in the same exact order. I didn't tell them to use the colors in exactly that much quantity. 
I said, do you, you know, figure out what color feels right to you. Yes, we're using the same six colors, but the end result, if you go see those photographs, each one is a very unique expression of who that person is. We did watercoloring. They learned all the techniques that watercoloring, you know, they were, they were supposed, they were there to learn, but each one of them made something that was so different. That to me is where the magic is, is finding that ability to not follow things exactly as you're being told, but listening to your heart and deciding, is that what I really want to do? Yes, she's doing it and it looks great. Or she's doing it and I don't like it. Whatever that feeling is, but she's doing it being the key thing. What do you want to do? How do you want to express your inner artist? I have this, for some reason, lying over here, my Pentel oil pastel. So I feel like it's asking me to not ignore it. So I'm just gonna use it. Must have been from something I was doing earlier, but since it's just staring at me, I'm just gonna use it. Okay, these two I think I want her to have. And again, this is all willy-nilly. I'm just making sure that I go in and I give the hair something, some color some movement and it also kind of separates the women from the background when you do that and i'm not reaching out for too much stuff also my finger it has like a mix of all of these colors by the time i've reached back over here again which is fine i'm not cleaning my fingers in between i'm just kind of going with the flow being really loose about this and then i'm going to go in with my dark cocoa dark chocolate, that's what this is. And just add a little bit more of that shadow area over here to further define the face. Some shadow under the chin where the neck is. Do the same thing for this one. So you can actually, you know, batch process these too. How did this become a bookmark portrait making session? I don't know, but we were talking about this. We were talking about something like this and suddenly we're with bookmarks. That thought just arose in my head again. It's like, it's so amazing that you allow me to do that. Thank you so much for, for letting me be in the moment and for seeing where this journey goes. It's just, thank you. I really, really am grateful that you will let me do that and are not getting mad that I'm doing that, actually. <laughs> okay, maybe some shadow here on the left side of all the faces. And again, I'm just kind of scribbling with this because I will go in with my water and soften it because I don't want harsh shadows. I just want that appearance of depth in the face. And I feel the more I... Um, spend time with the face doing these little things, the more I get to know, I keep saying I get to know these, these faces that have expressed themselves on this piece of paper today, but I get to know them and I get to know what they're thinking, what they're feeling, or what I'm projecting onto them, essentially, but they're all so different. It's just amazing to me and my my watercolor portraits class that is launching on monday it's the registration's open if any of you want to go look at that i know some of you have already signed up and thank you for signing up if you already have but you'll hear me say the same thing in that class as well because that journey oh that journey was amazing it was just um fascinating to observe what was happening each time the inks played with the water. It was just absolutely fascinating to watch that. Oh, I just love, I just love how different each one of these is. I do have another Sharpie, which is a fine line Sharpie. I'm just making sure because the thick one sometimes makes the details too thick. So if I've missed any eyelids, just going in there and fixing that. So it doesn't look all the way very odd. Okay, so the sketching bit is done. I think the face bit is done. So let's see what we can do with the background. So you see how 
we have this face and then you you can see all the sheen over here and then you see some more over here but then the face itself has so much it's just ah, beautiful and I'm not saying that it's beautiful because I made it. It's beautiful because of just how it's played with everything around it. It's there's there's just so much synchronous energy to this. It it's almost like this belongs. It's it's strange how that happens, right? Okay, backgrounds. So I got some embellishment mousses here. I have uh, Let's see what colors these are. Does it say, oh, this is an orange blush. This is a Persian red. And this is a lemon sorbet. So I have these three and I will need some parchment paper now, which I can easily access without getting up. Yay for being lazy. I designed this studio with that in mind, but I don't want to keep getting up. Oh, look, this is new. Which one is this? Now, see, this is what I'm talking about. I have so much stuff. Why do I need to buy more things? Gotta use what we have. Use what you have, people. And it's been an hour since we've been doing this. And I'm almost done. So if you need to go, you can go. If you already um, left a comment, then you are in the drawing for receiving one of these. If you still want it. <laughs> Because these, these keep evolving. Okay, so let's see what we're going to do here. I'll get my palette knife. I never used to use a palette knife to get any of these embellishment mousses out until I learned that I was doing the wrong thing by introducing... I don't mind getting my fingers messy, which is why I was like, okay, I don't mind getting my fingers messy, so I don't need a palette knife to bring out the embellishment mousse, but it's not about getting your fingers messy, that's the problem. The problem is introducing bacteria into this and making this moldy, and these are expensive. And all of these mediums are expensive, so when you invest in them, make sure to use them before they all completely dry up and become cakey and unusable, and you definitely don't want to introduce any kind of bacteria into these, so it makes sense, right, to not do that. Because I was just really nearly going in with my fingers. Okay, so these are cakey now because I haven't... The one that I just opened was nice and moist. So I want to go back to my stencil. This I just scraped off, as you noticed, without thinking. So now I'm just smudging that around. So I want to go back to my... I'm going to give them one-on-one -on -one love now. So I'm going to finish each one as I go along. And because she has this woven loom pattern over here, actually, let me see if I can zoom in a bit because you don't need to see all the stuff that's around, right? You can just focus on, how do I zoom in? Oh, there's a way to do that. Mm. There we go. So if I zoom in, you'll be able to see better what I'm doing with the texture pastes. So there, just place this on top. Use a combination or use a singular embellishment mousse color, totally up to you, what you wanna do. And I just give it a nice rub with my fingers. Now, if you wanted, you also always have the option at this stage to go back in with your mica spray stains and spray those on while having the stencil on there. You always have that option, so don't forget that. If you wanna use your Distress Mica stains at this stage, just make sure you hide the face if you're making a face and use it. And so you have this nice dress now that she's wearing or blouse or you know whatever. And now I do want to hide the face because I said that out loud and I want to see what's going to happen. So I'm going to get my paper towel and I'm going to hide her face like so. And I think I'm going to, we did orange over there. I think I'm going to do the yellow flickering candle. Where are you? 
You see the green. Oh, there you are. Gonna do the flickering candle up top. Not gonna do it through a stencil. Just want that nice sheen over there. Oh, I should have gotten my splat box, shouldn't I have? Because I'm gonna get spray everywhere. Well, we'll see. Just that much. Yeah. And then she gets a little sentiment over there. I'll punch a hole over here, put a string through, and done. It's so easy. It's so easy to make these. I mean, it's so easy to do mixed media. People get so caught up in how mixed media is so difficult. It's not. It's definitely not difficult. It's difficult if you think of it as difficult. It's just a matter of mixing. I might just give her some uh, Posca Mark stuff just to brighten her up a bit and make her a bit more cheerful. I'm gonna add some of this grit paste. Haven't played with it quite as much. So this one is a grave texture paste. It's stone tinted and it's opaque. But then there's also this one, this grit paste, which I like. It's the translucent grit paste. I have never mixed these grit pastes with embellishment mousses. Never thought of doing that. But now that I have both of these textures on my parchment paper, I'm gonna see if I can mix them and what happens as a result. So for this, I want to use my X's. But you know what I'm gonna do? I just wanna use my orange embellishment mousse over here and just carve out an area that is kind of opaque. And a lot of people have told me this is not how you should be using them. This is how you should be using them, like having gloved fingers or using a paper towel. So basically doing something like this. Here's what I say to them. I say thank you for telling me how you would use them, but this is my preferred way of using it. So again, the whole you should, you shouldn't kind of thing. If that rule doesn't work for you, you don't have to follow that rule. Maybe all of them can have the same clothes. Um, same looking clothes and that'll be nice because four people that are joining me from different parts of the country Get to get something that has a thread of similarity in it Right because we did end up hiding quite a bit of the background. So the foreground should also have some of that sense of similarity And just again using the spray keeping the stencil on top Seeing what that does no idea what these sprays will do on the mica stain I do not want to let that go waste. I still have this background sitting here. Oh, nice. Got a bit of that. Oh, look at that. Interesting. So some of it just immediately dried up. Some of it seeped, which is fine. But that's what it's looking like on the embellishment mousse. I don't know if this is gonna dry up, so we'll see. I'm gonna keep an eye on that. I love what's happening over here, but I feel it's becoming too busy right here where her face is because my eye, again, with any of these mixed media pieces, you want your eye to go to one thing first and then move around. Like over here, I'm happy with it because your eye goes here first, then moves around. Over here, my eye is kind of drawn to this and to this at the same time. So the way that I am going to fix that is by mixing my translucent grit paste with my embellishment mousse and seeing over here in this innocuous area first what that would look like. And if I like that, because I don't want to lose the entire background, obviously. It's a really pretty background, but I also don't want to hold myself back when it comes to experimenting because that's what I'm the queen of, <laughs> experimenting. Can this be done? Well, then let's do it. Okay, 
So that grit paste is interesting texture. This one is opaque. So this is definitely going to take away from, but this is going to add some. Oh, see, so what happened here? My finger had the embellishment mousse, the orange. And then when I mixed in some opaque grit paste, the opaque grit, grit paste took on some of that color. So this is going to have that texture when it dries up which I think is amazing because, oh, and look, this is starting to dry up too on the embellishment mousse. What exactly is embellishment mousse? It, embellishment mousse adds metallic dimensional details to your craft project. It's basically a thick, it's, they also call it stencil butter. It also goes by that name. Another company makes that stencil butter. If you're familiar with that, it's a thick base. It's just a texture. It's just a fancy way of applying texture that has a metallic sheen. That's what it is at the end of the day, honestly. It's just, a, it sounds really fancy, embellishment mousse. But it basically is just another way of having colorful texture additions that are metallic in your mixed media projects. So I'm just adding, I like the texture that that introduced, the grunge that that introduced. I don't want to go overboard with it. But see, it makes this one look different from this one. I like that. Where are my two other girls? There they are. Okay. Oh, this one is, it feels almost like this one is pretty complete already, but I'm just gonna add some of that embellishment mousse over here to her to give her that same shine. And I like that the embellishment mousse is not really uh, covering up the entire background or the marks that we made initially but that it's kind of giving it a nice luster. So it's semi-opaque, right? It's an, it's an interesting effect. I kind of like that. So then just going around the dress and the, the collar area, making that a bit darker. Um, she almost looks like she has a speech bubble coming out. I'm gonna leave that be. But I do want to add just a little bit of yellow here, the flickering candle. Again, I'll cover up her face and do that bit. We're almost, almost there in terms of completing this project, which was an unintentional project. I like that bit of yellow over there. And this uh, dress with the stencil, here we go with the stencil. I liked how the embellishment mousse is under and then we have the mica spray on top and maybe we could do that with a purple in this one or maybe she's not a purple she's not speaking purple to me maybe which one did we not use yet have we used the where's that other one the tomb there's the tomb empty tomb she's more of a broomstick or a tomb girl i think i'll use tomb in her just for that extra oomph and I haven't used it before either, so you'll get to see what the tombstone looks like. Oh, that's intense. Um, let's pick it up on this sheet here. This is turning out to be its own thing this whole sheet. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Probably turn it into something too, but it's really cool. It's it's fascinating how fast the mica stains dry up. Even on top of the embellishment mousse. And it introduces again that feeling of rust. It's just it's it's interesting. It's just a very different effect. This one is very very busy. So everything she's kind of um blending into the background. So I'm just gonna fix that a bit. She's really not separated from the background, but I also don't want her to have like a, a white coastly look to her. So I'm just using my Stabilo pencils here. So, you know, play with your mediums and don't worry about what works together, what doesn't work together. Don't get too caught up in all of that because you can pretty much make anything work together if you want it to work together. And you 
don't have to stop yourself from trying out. Maybe you don't know how it's going to work. Try it out and then you will know how it's going to work, right? Okay, that's a bit better in terms of her face being a little bit separate from the background. So just a little bit of white, pink and brown there. And I love this. I don't want to lose this because this is just beautiful. But I do want to define her, her outfit. So I'm going to use my Distress Crayon here. And I'm just going to start smudging it a bit. And again, you can see, you know, each one of them, I've used a different thing. I haven't done the same thing, same exact thing in any of them. But I've used the same supplies. So see how you have that sense of she has a dress on and or a blouse on, separates her face from the background. The background is still intact. Didn't use any fancy stuff yet on this one. And when I say fancy stuff, I mean grit paste and all of that embellishment mousse. Just, just kind of dabbing it on, you know, willy-nilly. Okay. Maybe I can do some of this on the edges over here too. I think that'll be cool. You know, the real reason I'm doing this is to clean my finger, right? Half the time, that's how my mark making happens is when I have remnant texture on my fingers or something I'm just trying to clean off. Just being honest, that's, I don't think about mark making intentionally most times. It's just cleaning my fingers. You're past the point of shock with me if you've been with me. You know I do stuff like that. So I don't expect any raised eyebrows. Okay. I'm gonna let these be. All right, now for some final embellishing with my, which I have to get up for because I keep them over there. I can actually roll over there, but I have lots of stuff on the ground, are my glitter drops and my gold pen. And some of these might not even come out because again, of not using them when I should be using all of these supplies that I have. Okay, so I've got two gold pens here and I've got liquid pearls and I've got Nouveau drops. So this is just to kind of take it up a notch. Wrong thing. First, let's do the dots. I like adding dots to everything. Sometimes they come out, sometimes they don't. So that's why I pick up two. Well, this one's not coming out, so it's not going to get any gold today, I guess. Let's see if this one comes out. There we go. So just going to add, whoops, and this frequently happens too. So if something just blurts out like that, spread it, make the best of it, set that aside. Maybe she's going to get some pearls. Looks like she wanted pearls more than the other one did. There we go. She's got pearls. And this one can get some pearls in or strands in her hair. Again, the beauty of not thinking. You can see I'm literally making these split second decisions. It has nothing to do with anything that is preconceived or how I want these to be. It's just, this is what decided to come out today. The gold didn't. And so this is what got used in different ways. I do have some gold here. I think I'm gonna give it to her for her eyelids. I think she can get some gold here on her lips. And I'm just adding, you know, taking one thing and kind of just playing with it and seeing how each one of them could have the same elements, but maybe sometimes in a different way. So just feel free to experiment, just feel free to play is, I guess, what I'm trying to say. 
and then I like this. I'm just going to add some more of that sepia ink over here because I just realized I wanted a bit more definition because when I squint my eyes and look, and of course I shouldn't have done this after adding the Nouveau drop here, but oh well, afterthought. Okay, all right. This looks good, maybe make her smile a bit. None of them are smiling. Make them a bit happy, happy looking. Okay, last bit is adding words. I like adding words to all of these and also I have to punch them. So let me see if I can get my crocodile here. And let's punch them. Uh, this way. So I am not familiar with this as much as I should be, which is why you see me fumbling here a bit. Okay, there we go. Punched. Might not be in the center. If it's off-centered, I hope it's okay. Trying to eyeball it. Not the best at punching holes. Ack, they're all going to be off-centered. I'm sorry. My sense of centering is wrong. Well, this one is probably centered. <laughs> oh, the joys of doing things live and fast. Um, let's see. I think this is centered. Okay. Two of them are centered, two of them are off-centered. But I hope you won't mind that. And then for words, I usually have this tray here. And what I do in this tray is I type out some words and I'll put them in or I'll find something in a magazine and I'll cut it out and then I'll just add that. So it makes my life easy. It makes it organic in the moment because I'm not going around looking for a word I want to specifically add to any of them. It's whatever's in the moment feels right with the face and the vibe that I'm getting from that particular face. That's what goes on there. So we'll see. Um, I like the charm. There's also... Huh? Yeah, it's mine. Do not. I don't like the negative in that. Do not. Show your colors. I like the show your colors. Let's do show your colors. So I'm just going to cut this so that it's in two lines. And then I'm going to smudge some of these uh, Nouveau drops. I'm pretty sure of that. So they might not look like pearls by the time they end up with you guys. But you'll know that I intended pearls, right? <laughs> okay, so take some of this glue. Show your charm. No, show your charm doesn't work. Show your... And sometimes, you know, when you stick your words on or your phrase on, you will maybe end up adding some other elements just to unify the theme. I'm not saying I'm going to do that. I'm just saying that that's a possibility that you shouldn't discount. And also don't worry about covering. I know we made this really cool pattern where we sprayed the mica stain on after. We haven't lost it completely. It's still there. So again, hide and seek, you know. Um, let's see. There's word. There's heart. I'm just randomly placing them and seeing how it makes me feel. And I messed up her necklace. So I've got to be a little bit more careful about how I'm placing them. I have a feeling one of these could use loyal. So I'm just going to cut this up. This is uh, my favorite things precision glue. And I also like lawn fawns. 
precision glue. I ended up uh, in 2020, they started running out of these glues and so I got panic attacks because I just love this precision glue. So I hoarded, I bought like 12 at a time. So I think I still might have 10 of them. Which one of these looks like? I like her being loyal. I'm gonna have her being loyal. If I am so sorry, I'm smudging everything. So here's what I'm gonna do, because this is gonna drive me nuts. Trying to preserve this is not gonna work for me. So she's just gonna have to have a neckline that is flatter. And then these, because I'm cleaning my finger, can go around. Some dots here here. That also takes care of that extra black that I had over there. Okay. There, they almost look like bouquet. There you go. All right. Now that I'm really clumsy with my hands, uh, where does the loyal go? There it is, I think. Yeah. Okay, so we'll take this and half my... Um, that's what happens in my art journal too. Because I'm so clumsy, you know, things just happen. And I like to call it serendipity. It's meant to happen. That way I'm not gonna fight it. There, she's loyal. She has show your colors. Let's see what else we can find. In my stash here, I liked charm. I really like charm for her. But I'm wondering if, oh, luminous. Luminous, let's do luminous. That's a fun one, luminous. Such a nice word. To say someone is luminous says a lot about them. Oh, the other side said art. Ack, should get tweezers. Okay, luminous. I want the texture to stay. So I'm going to put my luminous right here. Right under where that texture is kind of peeking through. Okay, and I like charm for her. I'm just trying to see if there's anything else that can go with that charm. Handwritten, probably not. With you, charm with you. Probably not the charm, the games. What else do I have? Success. Listen, I don't think anything's going to go with the charm. But I want to use the charm because it really feels right for her. Safe, powering, color, use. Use charm? Probably not. Use charm. I just want to use that word charm. Charming, I wonder if I could make it, I can't make it charming because it's a, a magazine cut out. Doubling down, stuff, stopping, real. Ooh, I like real charm. See, this is why you shouldn't give up. Real. We'll try not to mess up those pearls. Real. Where's the charm? Real charm. There we go, real charm. Okay, real. And then we'll stick the charm on. Real charm. Okay, cool. I got my gold pen here for a reason. I just like adding little things, little details with my gold pen after I do the last, absolute last thing. And you know, that just kind of adds to the personality. So all I did here is 
gave her kind of a hairband and then added some earrings. You know, just adds to the personality a bit. And it says, show your colors. And if you really want to intensify that message, you can just use a bit of that abandoned coral. And make like a darker area right there. And so it emphasizes show your colors. So it's little, little things like that, you know, that make a difference. So I'm calling this one complete. So the only thing that needs to go on here is a tassel. So I'm going to get one of the tassels. And of course, this needs to dry before this can be mailed. So here we go. There's your bookmark. I had said I would do at least two, but I ended up doing four. So that's kind of how I'm going to finish these up too. But I do want to pick out four people who will get these bookmarks. So let me see if I can look at the comments and select someone who said that they wanted it. So I'm just going to scroll down and see at what point people wanted to get the bookmarks. So the first one, let's see what exactly is embellishment news. Okay. I can see it over here. I can see me, me, me. I can see I love the idea of this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down, uh, close my eyes. This is my normal way of making these drawings is scroll down, close my eyes, open my eyes, whatever name comes up first that I look at that my eye lands on is the winner, first winner. And so I'm gonna scroll up and down, up and down. Randy, Randy is number one. Up and down, up and down. Marissa, oh, but Marissa, you're not in, sorry, you're in this bin. Um, number two is Jane. Jane, you're number two. Number three is Scrapper Les, so Leslie, and Leslie Parley, I think. And then let's see, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Molly Ann, four winners. So we have Jane, Molly Ann, Randy, and Scrapper Les. So that's Leslie. So if I don't have your addresses already, please send me a direct message and I will have them. Send it via Facebook Messenger or email me at info at .com And you will get one of these bookmarks. I'm not gonna tell you which one you're gonna get, so. You're just going to get one of these. It's going to be yours. And I will wait for these to dry up. I will add some embellishments. I will not modify them um, any more than what I've done here. So you, what you see is what you're going to get. And I'm going to share what I do, what I end up doing with this background on the Facebook group, Mansi Makes With You. So stay tuned. It won't be bookmarks. I'll tell you that. And thank you so much for all your time. I know we did a lot of unexpected things today and I hope that some of it was helpful. Uh, the idea was not to demonstrate um, how mica sprays work. Uh, it was more of let's play, let's explore, let's see what happens. And that's exactly what all of you allowed me to do. You allowed me to play, you allowed me to explore. We went on this journey together of... Uh, an unexpected ending and I love that. I love that uh, you were willing to just play and let me play. Yes, and uh, I'm entertaining questions. I'm not in a rush to leave. I know I went over time. This was supposed to be an hour long thing, but if you have any questions and you want to hang around, definitely ask me the questions. I'm here to answer them. And um, I hope that there's, you know, um, no confusion about the sprays. If you do have any confusion about how these sprays work in relation with the mica, uh, in relation with the distress oxides, definitely go watch Tim Holtz's videos. He is uh, the person who made all of these, so he knows uh, how they work best. And his demos are always very, very, very inspiring and also informative. So definitely watch his demos if you have questions that are specific to the mica stains. 
If you spray too much and end up with mud under your stencil, what would you do? So if you spray too much, first thing, don't spray too much. Spray a little less. Um, spray from a distance. I find that helpful. If you end up with mud, my recommendation when I end up with mud, so I showed you that die cut that I just did, right? I ended up with mud in that. And that was because I overdid all of it, was overdone. I'll pull it back up again here so you can see. Let me just uh, change the screen here. So I made mud in this one. I sprayed too much and I sprayed a lot of um, different things. So I have the mica stains, I have the ox oxides in here, also different stencils. This really doesn't look like anything. When something like that happens and it doesn't look quite as distinct as this, you can do two things. You can um, add marks with something other than stencils. So use a water soluble pencil, use a distress crayon, use an oil pastel, use your Posca markers. Change the character of that mud. Treat that mud as a background, as a brown background that you are now enhancing. That's one tip. Second thing, die cut with that mud and you will find that it looks completely different. It will look transformed Cut it up into little pieces and then do your mark making on that. And that would be helpful too. Okay. Um, any other ideas that community members have, please share them in the chat. Because if you have ideas for how to transform things that might look like mud, then definitely share those too. Those are my two suggestions. And you can see when you, when you die cut anything, I mean, this is an intricate die. It doesn't have to be that intricate. It can even be a punched out circle and you can have circles within circles, you know, stuck on top of each other. You can, you can do so much with that. Don't trash it. That's the last thing I'll tell you to do is to trash it. Don't trash it. Also, don't try to um, overdo it. You know, it's, it's easy with these sprays. I'm noticing is when you start spraying, it's very easy to kind of just go overboard. So just exercise some restraint when you are spraying, that will be helpful. Uh, another question I'm getting is, what did you first draw your women with? I first drew them with the sepia ink, which is the Derwent Intense pencil, the sepia ink, and I also used the dark chocolate um, and the bark. So did you dry the bottom layer of spray before doing that? I didn't dry anything, no. I didn't dry anything. Uh, the question is, did you dry the bottom layer of spray before doing the stencil layer? I didn't use, I, it was all in real time. I didn't dry anything. It's, um, you know, I didn't use a heat gun. I didn't, it's just air dry. So I am not a big fan of using my heat gun for anything. It's just one extra step. Unless I'm trying to speed up a process and I have multiple other things I want to do and the texture. I have used a heat gun for texture pastes and apparently you're not supposed to do that, but I get very impatient. So I use my heat gun for drying up textures but for these sprays, I haven't used the heat gun at all. I believe if you use your Distress Oxide sprays and you spray water on them, it becomes wet, the paper, and then you do need to dry it up to get that mottled effect right away. You could also let them air dry at that point, but I didn't dry the bottom layer of my spray before doing the stencil layer. And I'll also tell you that when I don't do that, when I don't dry, and maybe this is converse, um, from the idea of what you're supposed to do with these. But when I don't dry my bottom layer, I end up with a more diffused, I feel, pattern that is not stark, that kind of, you see at the, at the very ends, it kind of blends into the existing background. The stencil was a bigger size, but it tends to blend into. So I find that that's the effect I like. Also, I am not a big advocate of using the heat gun unless I need to move on to step two and step three and I can't. This for me is not about precision, it's about playing. So for me having a dry paper before doing the stencil layer is not important at all. It's just to create grunge and a background that looks complex. So that's why I don't wait for the paper to dry or for that first layer to dry up. I'm just gonna scroll through and see, and I should make a note of who won because if you don't email me, I won't know how to follow up with you. So I'm just gonna use my pencil here and write the names down. I know it was Randy, 
it was Leslie and it was Molly Ann and I think it was Jane, right? I think those were the names. So if you don't reach out to me on Facebook Messenger or via my email, info at monsymakes.com, I'm going to hound you because I'm going to send you these bookmarks because you made me make them. <laughs> um, just scrolling through the comments to see if there's any other question. There's no other question. And of course, if you played along with me, you were not just listening to me blab and actually played, created something, anything, doesn't have to do with distress, gray stains, but since you spent so much time listening to me, if there's anything you created and would like to share, please do that. Uh, the group is Mansi Makes With You. It's on Facebook. Most of you are already members, but if you're not, just go to Facebook, look for Mansi Makes With You and join the group. It's a very happy, very helpful community of creatives and I love how kind and generous people are in sharing not just their feedback, but also encouraging each other and sharing new ideas, which is always, it's just, it makes my heart happy that you all have made this community so, so beautiful. Um, I wish somebody would teach about die cutting. What's an inexpensive machine, for instance, and how and when you would want to do what um, to die cut? So Jane, I don't know if you're a card maker, but Jennifer McGuire has a lot of videos on die cutting. Look her up on YouTube. She goes into details about the different die cutting machines there are, why um, she prefers some over others, how they differ. There are some that are um, electronic, there are some that are manual, and she goes over that and uh, all of that stuff too. So have a look at that if you have something specific about um, which... I use the big shot, which die cut machine you want to invest in. I use the big shot. So that's what I have. My video feels like it just froze on um, YouTube, but I can see myself live here. So I think nobody else has any questions. I see people dropping out. I am so, so thankful for your attention, your time, and just for giving me the space to play today. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope to see some of your creations over at Mansi Makes with you. And if you haven't signed up for the watercoloring with portraits class, it launches on Monday. There is a discount code right now for early bird registrants, which is available on Monsi Makes With You. So if you're part of the group, you know the discount code. And I'd love to see some of you take that class as well. It's a lot more of what we just did here, um, but it's about exploring with acrylic inks and just letting loose a bit more, a bit more than what we just did today. So I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I will see you soon in another, in another free demo or in a class that you might want to take with me in the future. Have a wonderful weekend.